Why is it yellow? Carbon, Kevlar, carbon, cup. <laughs> it's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, so we know I'm adding carbon all over this aircraft. My vertical is now carbon. My elevator and my rudder are gonna be fabric, but I do want my horizontal to be carbon fiber. I've enlarged it now 10 inches a side. I've made reinforced brackets, moved them further out. I've added three hinge points instead of two. I've enlarged the gauge on the rear bar so that there isn't twist because I've added 10 more inches. So this bar had to be bigger. So I was able to use parts from two tubs, one of them wrecked and build this new horizontal, but I'm not done yet. I want this horizontal to be really solid because of that prop blast. Obviously I want the bigger horizontal for more uh, elevator control in slower flight. So I don't run out of elevator at super slow flight. So that's why I went so much bigger. But I want to get this front side, front side rigid. So I'm going to convert the horizontal into carbon fiber and I'm going to reinforce it so that this back bar that isn't moving translates to the front and doesn't allow twist from the back and the front to create a little bit of shake out here. So to do that, it would add some strength to take carbon fiber and wrap this flat and it would look like fabric it's just pulled tight and flat but a carbon fiber as a flat sheet is not strong and so this could still bend up and down even if i'm holding this front very minimal this is a bit overkill but i want to go ahead and give it all i can on the back of this tail to reinforce it so since this carbon fiber can flex if it was laid flat like you do fabric i want to put an arc to it as soon as you take carbon fiber and you arc it like that, it can flip, it can wiggle this way. That would be a good example. <laughs> as soon as you put an arc to it, it can't. So I'm going to arc this tail like that. So that's what's done on almost all aircraft that's not fabric. They have a continual arc in it. So the way I'm going to do that so that I can actually reinforce the middle and take movement out of it is I'm going to add a three inch beam through the center of these two. It has to be center from front to back here. And even though this gets narrow, it comes center front to back. So the line actually travels on a little bit of an angle that matches the shape of this. So I'm going to make a beam by cutting out these notches to go around these bars. I'm gonna drop this down through the frame and I'm gonna add another one on here and we're gonna go from three inches thick all the way back to the original shape and put an arc to all the carbon fiber. These two pieces will come together and then I'll fiberglass them. I won't use carbon fiber against the metal and aluminum and the chromoly. I wanna eliminate as much galvanic corrosion as possible, so I won't use carbon fiber there, but I'll make an I-beam, and then the tops of the I-beam I'll do in carbon fiber, and that's what will make the permanent bond to the carbon fiber skin. So I'm gonna cut this out, I'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> All right, done. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like magic genie in a bottle. That part now notches around each one of these, and then this one, goes to the bottom and you can see we can pinch that together. And what I'll be able to do now is I'll micro the honeycomb back together. I'll put a I-beam top and an I-beam bottom. I'll micro these back together and then run glass around the I-beam, down across the joint, back across the bottom I-beam, fill in all of these and make it tight and this will become a permanent I-beam in the horizontal. So I hope that makes sense. And then the carbon can make this oh so gradual arc. Now, 
you can see I put the split line. It looks like one side is different than the other, but really I've got exactly an inch high here and an inch low here. I don't want to create an airfoil out of this. If you were to get like a Zenith 801 and you were to look at its horizontal and it's a riveted aluminum horizontal, the top of the horizontal would be flat. The bottom has an arc. It's an airfoil that's reversed of a wing. What that does is the air comes across, it creates a lifting surface on the underside and helps hold the horizontal down. A, on Carbon Cub, on my EX3 kit I have here, I've got a drive that allows me to pitch my horizontal to put the pressures exactly the way I want, so I don't need to create uh, an airfoil that's kind of fixed. I have a, a, an adjustable airfoil so it works at all speeds, which is one of the primary reasons. There's a lot of reasons I went with Carbon Cub to do this, but that's a really great feature to have. So I don't, I don't want to have any more lift on the bottom than the top. I want them to be exactly neutral. So I'm creating a neutral airfoil around both sides so that this stays neutral and all my pitching for CG adjustment, speed adjustment is done out of the drive. So this is the plan. I got a lot of work to do. I hope it makes sense. But when it's done, these arcing carbon fiber over an I-beam, locking the back that's braced out to the front and still being able to adjust is gonna make an unbelievably strong horizontal. So this is something that I'll be able to get out and stand on, which is not typical for a Cub. So that's the kind of strength I want. So that's what I'm going for. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, I'm still working on the horizontal. I've enlarged it over 20 inches. I've added support braces. I've doubled up the, the, the connection points of where the cables hook to it. Instead of one plate and, and clamping each side of that plate, I now have two plates and I'm putting the cable between two plates and hooking onto it. So I've doubled the strength of the connection point of the cable. I've also thickened up by doubling the gauge of the bar that goes down the horizontal from that connection point. So I take the twist out of it. I've added 10 inches. I can't just make up 10 inches and not make changes. So every time we enlarge or change something, you have to re-engineer it. So those are the two of the things I've done to make it stronger. And then there's an area I got to take weight out. So all of this right here came, came out of the cross braces of the horizontal. Those cross braces X'd through the plane of the horizontal so that with a fabric on it, it couldn't shift side to side. Well, I'm doing the whole thing in carbon fiber. And so I no longer need that. Once I skim the top and the bottom, as long as I've bonded it to the frame and made it one solid structure and it's carbon, I don't need all that weight out. So that's one area I was able to take out, help make up for the areas I had to make it stronger and then added carbon fiber. Now, it's really a unique way to do it. I've done it before, but anytime you're trying to bond carbon to metal or aluminum, first of all, they don't bond. You need to make an actual mechanical attachment. So the way I've done that, and I can't just attach carbon fiber to aluminum or metal without getting a corrosion effect between the two if I don't get a perfect connection. So the way I've done that is I took the bars and I wrap them in fiberglass so that it's got a mechanical connection all the way around the bar. Then I have something I can bond carbon fiber to and then wrap the carbon over the fiberglass. That makes sure that the carbon fiber won't make direct contact with the metal and I can prevent galvanic corrosion. It's mostly a big problem with like carbon fiber and aluminum. These are the last two components I need to button up that looks like one. There's a skin here and a skin there to skin it. I've got spars, two spars in the middle of each. So we'll go here and here. This would be the front, spar, spar. Right near the back, there was about a nine inch span. I can add more and more carbon fiber to bridge that nine inch, but it just get heavy. So instead of doing that or adding a whole third horizontal or uh, crossing spar through the whole thing, I just made a little triangle and I vacuum formed it into the sheet so that there's no point that the carbon fiber is spanning more than just a few inches. That'll give me a really clean, straight 
horizontal but doesn't change in the heat and temperatures. We are way more than halfway done with the horizontal and it turned out so good. This is three layers and it is unbelievably tight and um, really rigid so I'm super excited about it. It turned out perfect. All the bars, um, the metal bars, I wrapped in fiberglass. It's a way, first I coated it, then I wrapped it in glass. And that's the way um, lots of industries use to take a pipe. Let's say there's a pipe going through the ocean or underground, steel pipe, they wanna protect it and they're just, paint's not enough or rocks are gonna hit it. Or there's a pipe that's rusted, they grind out and they'll wrap it in fiberglass. It keeps 100% of the water out, all the moisture out, and it strengthens it. So the way I wanted to bond the carbon fiber to the metal was with glass so that the carbon wasn't in direct contact with the metal at any point and it could make an actual bond. So this looks like a metal bar, but that is actually fiberglass. And the skin is bonded to the top with micro, but more importantly, as we clamped it down, we ran the micro bead underneath and then we glassed across the carbon and around the bar on all the contact points with several layers. So this is absolutely permanent. I'm never gonna worry about any kind of corrosion or uh, maintenance on this and the carbon fiber is permanently attached through fiberglass. So the top is done. These are the sheets we made last night, dried overnight. Turned out really, really well. Three layers. On the back side, we've got an embedded rib. And that, if you were to look at this, is back here. Then I got a spar, a spar. Those were done with honeycomb, single layer glass spars. So I have two spars that embedded rib, then metal and metal. So this, and then I got the arc shape to it. It is so strong and so tight. I couldn't be happier with it. I got the bottoms I'm ready to put on. I'll do that now, trim them out and fit it, and we'll bond them on. And after it gets bonded on, I'll then carbon fiber from carbon over the glass wrapped metal and over back to carbon. So then I'll go carbon to carbon and then do a couple layers and I'll bond here, bond the back, and I'll have an entirely carbon wrapped tail section. So horizontal. Let's get to work. Two more to go. I'll be done. So I'm almost done with the horizontal on Scrappy. I want to show you the differences and then I'll tell you the last couple steps I've got to do. So this is super light carbon fiber. We got it all wrapped. What I really like about it is that's just a couple layers thick, but it is tight, tight, tight. So this is the standard size. Kind of give me an idea of how this changed. So we're much larger, a little bit more depth here, almost 10 inches longer in length. That gives you one difference. The other, this has two hinge points. And when I stretched it, I switched it to three, added one in the middle, moved one further to the outside. And I'm gonna do something really cool for my flying wires. We'll get into that later. They won't be wires. It's gonna be awesome. Now, to add further strength, this isn't completely necessary. I think it's a really good idea, but it's really cool. Um, the carbon fiber gives me all the strength I need. It's actually way beyond what I need for a cub. But if it were to take a really hard hit with a rock, well, quite frankly, it holds up way better than fabric by a magnitude. I mean, it's not even similar. But I just wanna make sure if I actually hook a big giant rock, sharp jagged edge, and it kicks up and goes under the underside, bounces into the bottom of this, or comes over the top, well, actually went over the top and probably just glanced by it, wouldn't do much damage. It's usually the underside that takes the brunt but I want to put a couple layers of this. <laughs> Why is it yellow? This is Kevlar. What's really cool about Kevlar, it's not got the strength. Carbon fiber gives me all the strength, rigidity, anti-twist. There's so many features about carbon fiber, which is why we use it on all kinds of things. Kevlar has a totally different property that is just awesome. You'll notice it right when you take a pair of scissors and try and cut it. It's like impossible to cut. You can cut it. It's just really difficult, really strong. 
We're gonna put a couple of layers of Kevlar on this. Anywhere on the aircraft that could get hit with rocks, we're adding a couple layers of Kevlar. What that does is if it takes a really, and I'm not talking about pebbles and little things that chip paint. I'm talking about the rocks that want to dent, break, smash guide wires, those kind of rocks. If it hits that carbon fiber, carbon fiber has a ton of flex, a ton of strength. If you get to a certain point, you can crack it and the resin cut the carbon fiber. If you use Kevlar with it, when it goes to break, instead of cutting, because Kevlar is so hard to cut and has so much strength in that property, it holds it together and keeps it from breaking through and opening it up. So that's why bulletproof vests are made out of it. I'm gonna add Kevlar to the places I can have rock strikes, probably a complete waste, a little bit more weight. I'm doing it anyway, I think it's worth it. So my carbon fiber, Kevlar, horizontal, getting close. Back to work. <laughs> All right, guys, so, been sanding for a few hours. And uh, every time I work with Kevlar, it's like a hardcore reminder of how different carbon and Kevlar is. Carbon, when you sand it, man, you can sand it and get this glass finish and it's just gloss. It's hard, it's strong, it's really rigid. And Kevlar is not so rigid, it's very flexible, pliable. And when you sand it, instead of getting like this gloss sheen, you get this fuzzy, old worn out pair of uh, like Levi jeans. It's like sanding cloth. It's so strong and it doesn't want to cut or break. It wants to stay intact, which is why we wrapped our horizontal so it can take a big old rock impact and not come apart. It won't blow a hole. The carbon for the structure, the Kevlar to keep holes from punching through it with big rocks on the tail. But right now, I'm getting ready to add another layer of carbon over the top just because I want to do something cool with the carbon look on the top of my horizontal. I've got all the strength I need, so this last layer is going to be a little bit cosmetic, but I'm getting really close. And even though I'm about ready to add another layer, I still do body work. Now, it's a lot of extra work. Body work guys will understand this and appreciate it. But every time I go through, I'll add a few layers if I'm switching from one to another or there's a reason I need to add a layer. I go through and I do all the body work of knocking down all the high spots and then add the last layer. And the reason for that is if I leave high spots, like you can see one right here, and I don't knock down that high spot, what will end up happening is when I add the next layer to it, I'm gonna end up having a problem where the next layer bridges over that high spot. And then when I sand, I actually lose that strength of that layer. So where I get those high spots, typically you can see them more on the corners, is when you wrap around a corner and you got two layers or four layers where everywhere else is two. So you got two layers extra thick. What I'd rather do is lose those two extra layers, bring that's about 10 thousandths of an inch per layer, bring that 20 thousandths of an inch down add the last layer, then when I go to do body work and I sand, I don't sacrifice an actual structural layer or a finished layer. The other thing it does is it saves a ton of weight. It is so much more work to do body work on this aircraft. On these horizontals, I will do body work three full times, then paint, and then final sand. So we're talking four times with a sander. But what I do this way is I don't get to the finished product and then worry about sacrificing that last layer or two on the high over, overlapping folds, and then have to raise body filler to cover the entire product and sand down and stop at the structural layer and have 40 thousandths, 50 thousandths, 60 thousandths of an inch of a heavy body filler paint. On an aircraft the size of Scrappy, this several extra step process is probably gonna save me realistically 30 to 40 pounds of body work, or I would be sacrificing structure and strength by losing my external layers 
and having less body work. So it kind of sucks. <laughs> but I kind of like body work. It's where I clear my head. So I'm going to get back at it. When I'm sanding, I'm working on all kinds of other projects that I want to do, and I kind of get excited about it. And it's just a way to kind of dive in and go work for four, six, eight hours of just grinding away and then uh, go build something out. So I'm going to get back at it. <laughs> Here's the finished horizontals. I still got a little sanding to do, but man, it came out so straight. There's so little work to do on it. So I'll take a light sand to it, but um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm so used to seeing everything in carbon, but that green is <laughs> pretty cool. So I guess if I was doing an army camo plane, this would work, <laughs> but Scrappy's gonna be black, orange, and silver. And I'm gonna have a lot of raw carbon showing, a lot of black. So even though I have Kevlar horizontals, I'm gonna actually add, for the top side where I wanna see some black, I'm gonna add another layer of Kev or, uh, carbon over top of the Kevlar layers. So this is carbon, Kevlar, carbon, cup, <laughs> horizontals. So these are absolutely massive. I am gonna have so much um, rear stability, elevator control, uh, slow flight control, have a lot of stick left over. It does broaden the CG envelope. However, I'm not gonna need it. Um, I am building it to stay within standard CG envelope with a small horizontal. So all this is extra safety, extra stability of speed, less vibration, less shake. I'm getting all kinds of benefits by adding all this extra strength. Uh, there you go, my carbon Kevlar horizontal carbon cub ex3 <laughs> back to work